The idea of the G20 has developed through crises. The first idea for getting the group of 20 countries together came in the aftermath of the Asia crisis. The idea of having a summit of heads of state came during the financial crisis of 2008-2009. In both of those instances, it was very important that a large group of countries, larger than G the G8, but smaller than the UN or even the IMF, come together to discuss issues relevant to the crisis, solutions to the problems that the crises were throwing up. And face-to-face -face contact was absolutely crucial to preventing false steps, preventing actions being taken by one country that were simply avoidable if a group of countries had talked and considered ways to address the problems together. The interesting thing about this summit is that there is no crisis. In fact, there is a kind of anti-crisis. There's an effort to, to portray the, the global economy as being recovered from a crisis. I think prematurely even, I think we're still going to feel ripples from the European crisis. But there's very much a, a, a desire here to portray normalcy. Syria has put another layer of confusion on this by distracting from economic issues and in some senses quite rightly bringing the leaders together on an important global issue which is not economic but still very important to the political stability of the global economy. But there is a question whether in normal times, in periods when there is not a crisis, whether these summits are ever going to have the urgency to focus attentions on the very substantial agenda of issues that, are, that must be resolved in order to prevent future crises or at least to mitigate the size of future crises. And in this, I fear, fear that the G20 is perhaps not the best forum or else at least not a forum in which substantial results are going to be achieved. When you talk here to people and you hear the way the, the summit is being set up, you can't help but think that some more functional bodies are going to be better at pushing ahead with the reform than this very high profile, high level uh, set of meetings. So for example, when you're talking about reform of the international financial architecture, the IMF has very good governing bodies in the form of the IMFC, uh, in the form even of the executive board to pursue the real decisions that need to be taken to move the agenda past talk and debate about what needs to be done to action on the things that need to be done. Similarly, the uh, FSB is going to be very effective at thinking about financial regulation. And it's not clear that financial regulation actions toward better financial regulation are going to be taken here versus in those fora that are very tailored toward addressing the questions of the moment. With those two, two issues, global financial architecture, or you could call it institutional architecture, and overall financial regulation being the two most important issues for preventing future crises or mitigating the effects of future crises, it really would be wrong to think that the, the critical decisions are going to be made in the summit of leaders meeting once a year instead of in the institutions where those problems are dealt with.